Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jen, also known as Not Like The Others. It is so nice to see you today. So nice to have you on the channel. And this channel is all about friendship bracelets. I make tutorials, I do fun challenges. So if you're into that sort of thing, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you all how to make this super adorable ghosty bracelet just in time for Halloween. And I do just wanna give a little bit of a disclaimer for this video. I do kind of go over the different knots very fast. So if you've never made a friendship bracelet before or you're very new to the whole hobby, then definitely check out my other video that I made last week. And it is a step-by-step -step guide on how to make all of the knots that I talk about in this video. Now for this bracelet, I'm going to be referencing pattern number 99952 from bracelet.book.com. And as you can see, we're only going to be making this a little ghosty part here. And I just thought they were so cute. I had to put them on their own little bracelet. So let's just jump right into it. Here are all the materials you'll need. You'll need two skeins of black embroidery floss. You won't end up needing all of it, but you're going to want to go ahead and just have two on the ready anyways, just because we will go through more than one. And you can go ahead and cut five pieces of the black embroidery floss at 80 centimeters. You'll also need 80 centimeters of white embroidery floss. 30 centimeters of pink embroidery floss. You'll also need a couple bobbins, some tape, scissors, no sew fabric glue, and a ruler. So I started with this black skein of embroidery floss by DMC and I've already just gone ahead and cut five strands of that embroidery floss at about 80 centimeters long. And once you've cut your five strands you can go ahead and wrap the rest of your skein around a plastic bobbin like I have. You can get these at any craft store or Walmart or the dollar store you can make these out of cardboard so I'm gonna start by taking those five strands I cut at the beginning and I'm going to fold them in half just so that all of the ends are lining up here and then I'm gonna follow this down until I get to this middle part right here so once you have the middle of your strings you're gonna go ahead and take a piece of tape and we're going to be taping the strings down at this halfway point right onto our table. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay these down. And just lay the tape over top of all of your strings. And you can give them a little tug, make sure they're not going anywhere. So I have my piece of tape here. I have about 40 centimeters of string on this side of the tape, and then 40 centimeters of string on the other side of the tape. But I'm just gonna put that up out of the way for now and just work with this bottom half. Then I'm going to take my bobbin of black embroidery floss. I'm gonna take my tape, and I'm just going to take the slack here and just tape it up out of the way just like so so it's attached to the table I'm gonna unwind some of this and now we're ready to start creating our loop so next I'm going to create about 20 forward backward knots and I'm gonna create those forward backward knots over all five of these strands here using the leading string that I just attached to the side so I'm gonna make my forward hitch and followed by a backward hitch. So I'm just gonna continue making my forward backward knots and like I said, I'm gonna be making about 20 of them. And if you need help making any of these knots, I do have a more detailed guide posted on my YouTube channel, which I will put in the description below. Okay, so I have made 20 forward backward knots. I'm just gonna go ahead and lift up all of this tape I've placed down. And I'm gonna pick up these knots I've created here and I'm gonna kind of bend them around my index finger, just like that. And this is going to be the top of our bracelet. This is gonna be the loop. And I just wanna make sure my loop is facing the right way. So I'm going to keep my bobbin on the left and that little piece of slack on the right. Okay, so there's my loop there. I'm just gonna go ahead and take some more tape. Tape the loop right to my desk. 
Just like so. So we have that little piece of slack from the bobbin that we attached. I just kind of stuck it out to the side here. And now I'm gonna take our bobbin and I'm gonna do a forward knot over all 10 of these strands now. So go forward. and forward. And now that we've really defined the shape of our loop, I'm gonna go ahead and just put one more piece of tape over it, just so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so now I have my 10 base strings. I'm ready to start making my actual bracelet. So now I'm gonna make the triangle end for our bracelet, and that's just creating a tapering effect going from our loop out into our actual pattern here. So I'm gonna start by separating my base strings in half. So I have five base strings on this side and five base strings on this side. I've secured my loop with my forward knot, so my bobbin is now on the right. So now I'm gonna pick up my bobbin and I'm going to create a forward backward knot over all five of these strings. So forward backward and then I'm going to do a backward forward knot over these five strings and putting my bobbin to the side for a second I'm just going to grab one strand from here put it in the middle and one strand from this side and put it in the middle, just like so. I'm gonna pick up my bobbin again. And again, I'm gonna create a backward forward knot on the far left. Backward. And forward. I'm gonna do a forward knot over this one string. I'm gonna do a forward knot over this string. And then I'm gonna do a forward backward knot over these strings on the far right. I've just set my bobbin to the side again. I'm just gonna go ahead and add one strand in from the right and another strand in from the left. And I'm gonna pick up my bobbin again. I'm gonna do a forward backward knot over this bunch of strings. So now I only have three left in this little bunch. So my forward hitch followed by my backward hitch. I'm gonna do a backward knot over this string that I just added in. Do a backward knot on this string here. Backward knot on this single string. A backward knot on this string. And then on the far left with your last three strings here, you're gonna do a backward forward knot. Backward, forward. Okay, and then I'm gonna put the bobbin to the side again. And I'm gonna add one more strand from the left into the middle and one more strand from the right. Okay, I'm gonna pick up my bobbin again, wrap any of the slack, leave myself a little bit of slack, and I'm gonna do another backward forward knot on the far left. Backward, 
forward. And I'm gonna do forward knots on each of these single strands here. Once you've made all your forward knots on these single strands, you can go ahead and do a forward backward knot on this bunch here, which is only two strings left in here now. We'll do forward and backward. And putting the bobbin to the side again, this is the last time we'll have to add more strands into the middle from those outside bunches. Just like so, and you can use a ruler to try and push some of your knots to keep them straight. So even though my strings on the far left and the far right are only single strands now, now that we've added all the other strands into the middle, I'm still going to do forward backward knots on all of the strings on the far right. And I'm going to do backward forward knots on all of the strings on the far left. And that is going to give us a straight edge all the way down our bracelet. And we're gonna do that for every single row. So on the far right, we're doing a forward, backward knot. And then I'm gonna do backward knots on each of these single bass strings here. And then for the string on the far left, I'm going to finish it off with a backward forward knot. And there we've created our triangle end for our bracelet. So now I'm just going to keep creating knots going back and forth with each row to create the negative space around our little ghosty friend. So again, on this far left string, I'm always going to be creating backward forward knots. Always backward forward knots. And on this far right string, I'm always, always, always going to be creating forward backward knots. So you just have to remember that when you're going backwards and forwards. So again, doing a backward forward knot on the far left. And then I'm gonna do forward knots going all the way across, excluding that far right string. Okay, and then to finish off this row, since I'm on the far right string, I'm gonna do a forward backward knot. And that finishes off the next row of our ghosty bracelet. So again, I'm just gonna keep going backwards and forwards like that. So pick up the far right string, do my forward backward knot. And then followed by all backward knots going all the way across, excluding that far left string. So I just sent backward knots all the way across here. And then for the far left, I'm gonna do my backward forward knot. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep going back and forth like that. So then I'll go forward in the middle here and then backwards and then forward and then backwards and I hope that makes sense. But this part is pretty tedious. It will take you a little while, and I think I'm gonna go actually do this off camera, but in total, you're going to wanna create about 30 rows with 10 full knots across. So I've only made three so far, so I'm gonna go ahead and make 27 more rows of just black. And then I will start recording again once I finish that. So I'm about halfway done making my rows here. I just wanted to come on and say that if you find your bracelet is kind of moving around a lot, you can just take another piece of tape and tape it down. This will help just keep your bracelet nice and straight. And I'm gonna keep going for another 15 rows or so, and then I will check back in. Okay, so now I have my loop, I have my triangle end, and I have 30 complete rows. 
that have 10 knots across all the way down. And the last row I just finished uh, consisted of forward knots. So starting our pattern will be going backwards. So now we're going to start making our pattern. So I'm just going to take my white string here and tape it down to my table because we will be using it for this row. Okay, so looking at this row here, I'm going to make three black knots followed by five white backward knots and then two more black knots. Okay, so I'm going to make my forward backward knot on the far right, followed by two backward knots using my black leading string still. Then I'm just going to take my leading string that I was working with and I'm going to tuck it behind all of my other base strings here. And I'm just going to kind of push it up out of the way. And then I'm going to grab my white string that I've already anchored off. And I'm gonna pull it underneath these base strings, underneath. And then I can go ahead and start creating some backward knots using the white floss. And you just want it nice and snug up beside the last black knot that you've created. Okay, and then we're just going to go ahead and make our backward knot. pushing it nice and snug up into the row. And then we're gonna go ahead and make four more backward knots using the white string. Okay, so now I've just made my fifth backward knot. And now I'm gonna take this white string and put it behind these two base strings. And I'm gonna put it up and over the black string I've put to the side here. So up and over. And then I'm gonna pull this black string back down underneath. And keeping it behind these base strings still, I'm gonna pull it out from here so I can go ahead and make the last two black knots I need to for this row. So I'm gonna grab my base string here. I'll tie my backward knots. It's like so, and then for our rule, of course, for our far left base string, we're gonna be making our backward forward knot. Okay, then looking at our next row, we're going to be making one black knot followed by three white knots, one pink, three more white knots, and then two black knots. So since we're going to be putting pink into this row, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my pink right now, grab some tape, and I'm just going to tape this off to the side just so we can use that later. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make my first black knot for this row using a backward forward knot. Okay, so now that I've made my black knot for this row, I'm going to go ahead and tuck my leading string behind all my other base strings. And I'm just going to put it up out of the way to the right. Then I can grab my white string. I'm going to pull it back down and pull it underneath this base string. And then I can go ahead and create three forward knots using the white floss. Okay, so now that I've made my forward knots using the white string, I can take my white string and put it behind 
the rest of my bass strings. And I'm just going to tuck it up over the black string. And now I can just pull my pink string underneath these bass strings on the left. And I can create one forward knot on the next bass string. So now I'm going to take my pink string and put it behind the rest of my bass strings. Put it up over the white. And then I'm going to pull the white back down. I'm also going to pull the black down now that I put the pink in and I'm just going to pull it right over to the left. And that's just so it doesn't get tangled behind all of these other colors behind the bracelet. Because I'm not going to need the black until all the way over here. So I don't want it to get tangled in between these white and pink color switches. So I'll just keep it over here for now. So I'll pull the white back down behind the bass strings. And then I'm going to go ahead and create three more forward knots on the next three bass strings. Okay, so now I'm going to put my white string behind the rest of my bass strings tuck it up over the pink just like that and now I can pull the black back over I'll pull it under the bass strings again and I can go ahead and put a forward knot on the next bass string using the black and of course since we are on the far right bass string we're going to make our forward backward knot to keep our straight edge. Let's get everything nice and straight. So for the next row we have a black knot followed by two white knots, two black knots, three more white knots, and then two black knots. Okay, so I'm gonna do my forward backward knot with the black here. And then I'm gonna tuck my black string behind the rest of my bass strings and tuck it up out of the way. And just like before, how we wanted to move the black out of the way so it didn't get tangled behind our bracelet, we're going to do the same thing with the pink. We're just gonna move that out of the way Keep it nice and neat behind our bracelet. So now we're gonna pull the white back down underneath our base strings. And we're going to make two backward knots using the white on the next two base strings. Okay, so now that we've made our two backward knots, I'm gonna tuck the white behind our base strings, tuck it up over the black. I'm gonna pull the black down over the pink and behind our base strings. And then I'm gonna make two backward knots using the black. Okay, now that I've made my two backward knots, I'm gonna tuck this behind my base strings, put it over the pink, over the white, and then I'm gonna grab my white string again Pull it over the pink behind my bass strings. And then I'm going to make three more backward knots. Okay, and now I'm going to pull the white behind my bass strings and tuck it up out of the way, put it over the black, and my black string is getting a little short and I think now would be a good time to add in another skein. And I've just gone ahead and wrapped another skein of black embroidery floss onto a bobbin. And I'm actually just gonna pull up on this tape over here and stick some slack under there, just like that. And there are two guidelines that I personally follow when I'm adding in more 
uh, at like more color or another skein. I generally try to avoid adding in more color when I'm right on the edge. I just find it keeps the edge uh, cleaner that way. My other rule of thumb is that if I'm on a row where I'm going backwards, I will add my color in from the right, like I will put my anchor in on the right. But if I'm on a row where I'm making forward knots, I probably would have anchored this on this side instead. And I find that just helps with the direction of the knots. I don't know, that's just my personal thing. You don't necessarily have to do it that way, that's just the way that I do it. Okay, so I've anchored my new skein of black in here. I'm gonna put it underneath my base strings, just like I would add in any color. And I'm gonna take the next base string, I'm gonna make a backward knot. And I'm just gonna make sure it's sitting in that row nicely. I don't want it to start going on a weird angle. I want it to be sitting nice and snug. And then on this last base string, I'm going to make my backward forward knot. And that is that row complete. Okay, so the next row coming up is very easy. It's gonna be one black knot followed by eight white forward knots and one more black knot on the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and make our backward forward knot on our far left base string. Staying with our straight edge technique. Okay, so we've made our backward forward knot. I'm going to stick the black behind all these base strings. Stick it behind here, up out of the way. Then I'm gonna grab my white and pull it in front of all of these other strings and pull it behind this base string. So in front of all these other leading strings I was using, but behind the base string that I just made a knot on. Okay, and then I'm going to make my eight forward knots on the next eight base strings. Okay, so there's our eight forward knots. I'm going to put the white behind the black here, tuck it up out of the way. I'm gonna pull our bobbin back down, put it behind our base string, and we're going to create our forward backward knot for our base string on the far right. Okay, so now we're essentially just going to mirror the rows that we already made on the other side of this row. So we're going to make one black knot followed by two white backward knots, then two black backward knots, then three white backward knots, and then two more black knots. So I'm gonna make my forward backward knot for my base string on the far right. And then I'm going to put my black string behind my base strings. And then I'm going to pull my white string back down, pull it underneath my base string. And I'm going to make two white backward knots on the next two base strings. Okay, so now that I've made two white backward knots, I'm going to put my white string behind these base strings. Put it up over the black, pull the black back down, and then I'm going to make two backward knots using the black on the next two base strings. Okay, and then I'm just going to tuck the black behind my base strings, put it up over the white, pull the white back down behind my base strings, and then I'm just going to make three more backward knots. And then I'm just gonna tuck my white behind my base strings, put it up over the black, pull the black back down, and then I'm going to make one backward knot on the next base string. 
and then one backward forward knot on the far left bass string. And then for our next row, we have one black knot followed by three white forward knots, one pink forward knot, three white forward knots, and then two more black knots at the end of the row. So go ahead, we'll do our backward forward knot. I'm gonna put my black string behind these bass strings. Put it out of the way. I'm gonna grab my white string here and I'm going to make three white forward knots. Okay, and then I'm going to take my white, tuck it underneath my bass strings, put it over the black, pull the black back down behind the bass strings, but I'm actually gonna pull it behind all of my bass strings and pull it over to the left. Then I'm going to reach behind that string that I just put over here, and I'm gonna reach for that pink that I set aside a few rows ago. Pull that back down and see now it's just coming nice and flat from behind the bracelet because we didn't get it tangled behind anything else. So then I can take my next bass string and I'm gonna make one forward knot using the pink. And then I'm just gonna take the pink, put it behind these bass strings and tuck it up over the white. I'm gonna pull the white back down Pull it behind these base strings. And I'm gonna go ahead and make three more forward knots using the white. And I'm actually done with the pink now, so I'm just gonna tuck it like right out of the way as much as I can. And I'm just gonna tuck the white behind the bass strings, tuck it up out of the way. And then I'm gonna grab the black from the other side, pull it under all of these bass strings. Then I can grab the next bass string here and make my forward knot. Followed by a forward backward knot for the far right bass string. And that is the next row complete. And then this will be the last row of our actual pattern. We have three black knots followed by five white backward knots and then two more black knots. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my forward backward knot on my far right string. And then two backward knots. And then I'm just going to put my black behind these base strings, pull the white from over here, pull it underneath these base strings on the right, and then I can go ahead and make five backward knots. Then I can go ahead and put my white behind my two base strings here, put it over the black, pull the black back down. I'm gonna make one backward knot, followed by a backward forward knot. And that finishes off our little ghosty pattern. So now I'm just going to make 30 more rows like I did over here on the other side of the ghost. So to do that, I'll just pick up this bass string. I'll do my backward forward knot. And then I'll do my forward knots all the way across, excluding the far right bass string. This last bass string, I'll make my forward backward knot, just like so. And then just like I did up here, I'm just gonna 
follow that motion, I'm gonna go backwards now. So I'll do my forwards, backwards knot, followed by eight backward knots. And then on the far left bass string, we'll make our backward forward knot. So I'm just gonna keep repeating that process just like I did up here. I'm just gonna keep alternating back and forth, always doing my backward forward knots on the far left string and doing my forward backward knots on the far right string. And I'm just gonna do 28 more rows so we have 30 in total on this side, and then 30 complete rows in total on the other side, just so our ghost is right in the middle of our bracelet. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that off camera, and then I will check back in once that's all done. Okay, so I've just finished making my 30 rows of alternating forward and backward knots. So at this point, this is what your bracelet should look like. You'll have your loop at the top, with your triangle end, followed by 30 rows of just negative space, our little ghosty friend in the middle, and then 30 more rows of negative space. So now we're just gonna go ahead and make our triangle end on the other end of the bracelet just so it matches the top. And I also haven't done anything with these colors yet. We will get to that. So now to make my triangle end at the bottom, I'm going to mirror what I did at the top. So I'm going to grab two strands of bass strings, place it to the side, and two strands of bass strings on the right, and place it to the side. So now I have all my single bass strings in the middle. Okay, then I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my bobbin, my leading string, bring it back to where it's supposed to be here. So now I'm going to start creating that tapering effect again. So I'm going to do a backward forward knot over these two bass strings on the far left. And then I'm going to do a forward knot on the next bass string. forward knot on the next bass string. I'm just gonna continue making my forward knots on the next four bass strings. Okay, and then when I get to these last two bass strings, I'm gonna go ahead and make a forward backward knot just like we did on the far left side of this row. And I'm gonna put my bobbin down for a moment, just so I can grab the next bass string on the far right and a bass string on the far left and put it over here. So again, this is just like what we did at the top of the bracelet to make our triangle end, but now we're just doing it backwards so the tapering effect goes downwards. So now over these three bass strings in this little bunch here, I'm gonna do my forward backward knot. And then I'm gonna do backward knots on the next four bass strings. And then I'm going to do a backward forward knot on the bunch on the far left, adding in that bass string. Because when we're making our triangle end, we always want these outside pieces to have the same amount of strings in them, just so our triangle stays nice and even and our row stays nice and even as well. Okay, and then just repeating that process, I'm just going to Add a bass string in from the middle to the far right and one on the far left as well. And then I'm going to do my backward forward knot. Over all four of these strings, followed by two forward knots on the next two bass strings.
Then on the last four bass strings, I'm going to make my forward backward knot. And lastly, I'm going to add these two bass strings to these outside pieces. I'm going to do my forward backward knot over this side. And then a backward forward knot over this side. And that's really going to bring that triangle end to a point just like that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do a forward knot over all of my strings just to really finish off that triangle. And I'm going to make sure that's nice and snug here. Forward and forward. Okay, and then leaving about two inches of slack, I'm going to go ahead and cut my string here. So now I'm going to keep my base strings separated in half so I have five on this side and five on this side. And what I'm going to do now is create the ties so I can actually tie the bracelet around my wrist. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with these five base strings on the left, and I'm just gonna separate them into three different sections. So I have two here, two here, and one here. And then I'm just gonna go and do a classic braid. And to braid, we're just gonna bring this strand from the far left, cross it over into the middle, and then the strand on the far right, bring it over, cross it into the middle. And you're just gonna keep repeating that process over and over and over again. And you wanna try and keep the tension here so your braid doesn't start to twist up on you. So I'm just using my thumb to try and keep all of those little braids in place. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really not the best braider in the world. Sure, a lot of people are a lot faster at it than this. But I'm just gonna keep braiding for about six inches or so, just because I want this to be long enough to tie on my wrist. And I do have quite a small wrist, so you may wanna make your braids a little longer if your wrist is a bit bigger. But I'm just going to go down about six inches or so. Okay, so my braid is about six inches long now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tie a little loopy knot by wrapping the base strings around my finger here. Okay, and once I've made my little loop, I'm just gonna feed the ends through here. And then I'm just going to try and pull that knot right to the end of my braid. Tied my knot maybe just a little bit too low, but that's all right. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the right with these base strings. And again, I'm just gonna do that off camera and then I will jump back in once I'm done that. Okay, so I just finished tying my other braid. I'm just gonna tie my knot at the end here. I did a horrible job of tying it last time, so I'm gonna actually try and wrap it around my nail and see if that helps. I had trouble getting it off of my nail last time and uh, I think that really hurt me in the long run. Okay, there we go. I made my little loop here and then I'm just going to put the ends of my base strings through that loop and pull them through just like so. And now we'll try and line up the knot with the end of the braid, just like that. That is much better than the other side. <laughs> So there we go, my ends are braided and tied off. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the slack at the bottom here. And then I can just get rid of those. Okay, so we are just about done our bracelet. I'm gonna go ahead and lift it off the desk and take off all of our tape here. Okay, so this is what our bracelet looks like now. We are just about done. The last step is just going to be cutting all of these loose ends and gluing them down. So I'm going to be using this no sew fabric glue. And as you can tell, it's quite old, but I still have quite a bit left in this bottle because this is the only thing I use it for. First, I'm just gonna flip my bracelet over and I'm just gonna pull on these 
back strings a little just to make sure they're nice and tight. And then I'm just gonna come in with my scissors and I'm just going to cut these strings a little bit. And maybe I'll just zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of slack maybe like half a centimeter. And I'm just gonna cut all of these back strings. So now they kind of look something like this. And then I'm also going to cut the slack off of this black string on this end and the black string on this end. So I have an old paintbrush here that already has a bunch of dry glue on it. And this is what I'm gonna use to put my glue on my bracelet. Ew! Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little dab of that fabric glue and I'm just going to gently apply it on the back of my bracelet just to keep all of those end pieces staying down. And I really don't find that this affects the comfortability of the bracelet either. Okay, so those are laying nice and flat. Just going to take a little bit more of that glue and I'm going to use it to kind of push this thread over here where I want it to go just like that and again just laying it flat and again I'm just gonna take a little bit more glue and do the same thing on the other side there we go and just lay it nice and flat just like so so after about 24 hours or so your glue will be completely dry and it will also be clear. It won't show up as white like that. It'll just be completely transparent and you won't even be able to really tell that it's there. So I'm just gonna wait for this to dry before I wear it or put it on, but it really shouldn't take too long before you notice the glue start to dry. And that is our little ghosty bracelet from start to finish. We have our loop, our triangle end, our pattern itself with our little ghosty friend, our triangle end at the bottom of our bracelet, and we've also tied it off with our little braids. And like I said, once that glue is dry, this bracelet will be ready to go and ready to be worn. So it's maybe been about an hour and a half since I put the glue on and it's honestly pretty dry already. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try it on. So I'm just going to stick the end through the loop that we've created and pull it through. And then I can just put it on my wrist and then I can tie it off. And then I have my cute little ghost bracelet that I can show off. And I can say, oh, why well, yes, I did make this with my own two hands. Yes, I'm very crafty that way. But anyways, that is all for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. If any of you do end up making this bracelet, be sure to take a picture or post it on Instagram and tag me at notliketheothers. I would love to see all of your creations. Leave your comments down below for any videos you'd like to see in the future, any questions you have. I will do my best to answer them to the best of my ability. And if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future i hope you all drink lots of water i hope you have your favorite snack today and i will see you in the next video bye also i put these fake nails on for this video because i thought it would be cute because there's ghosts on the nails and I made a ghost bracelet but these are the longest fake nails i've ever worn in my life and it was extremely difficult to make this bracelet so I would maybe uh, not suggest doing that and I'm probably going to take them off uh, right now as soon as I'm done recording so I'm gonna go do that okay bye bye